We continue our reading of Lest We Forget, a daily devotional by author George R. Knight. Today's reading, August 29, at the General Conference Session, Part 1. A brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city, and their contentions are like the bars of a castle. Proverbs 18, 19. Not all meetings of the church are equally pleasant. The Minneapolis meetings, unfortunately, fell on the negative side of the ledger. The Minneapolis Journal of October 13 trumpeted the Adventists as a peculiar people who keep Saturday as Sunday, revere revere a prophetess, and believe the end of the world is nigh. The October 19 journal reported that the Adventists tackled difficult problems in theology with about the same industry that an earnest man would assail a cord of wood. The newspaper might have added that they were just about as gentle with each other in their theological dialogue. The aggressive spirit evidenced was just what Ellen White had feared might happen. The 1888 General Conference Session convened in the newly constructed Adventist Church in Minneapolis, Minnesota, from October 17 through November 4, a ministerial meeting lasting from the 10th of October through the 17th preceded the formal conference session. While the business items were restricted to the formal session, the theological debates extended through both meetings. Wagner noted near the close of the session that the three main theological items on the agenda had been the Ten Kingdoms of Daniel 7, the Papacy and the Proposed Sunday Law, and the Law and the Gospel in their various relations coming under the general heading of justification by faith. Of those three, the only one that did not divide the Adventist leadership at Minneapolis was the religious liberty issue. All agreed that the proposed National Sunday Law represented an ominous sign of prophetic history related to Revelation 13 and 14. As a result, no one questioned A.T. Jones's sermon on religious liberty. The session took three actions regarding the Sunday issue to publish Jones's sermon on the topic, to sponsor him on a speaking tour to present the topic, and to have him lead a delegation of three to testify before the appropriate United States Senate committee. Thus, by the end of the conference, Jones was well on his way to becoming a full-time religious liberty advocate, a position in which he would make some of his most important contributions to the Adventist Church. Father. Fill us, especially in difficult times, with your Spirit, that we might learn to work with each other in more effective ways. This concludes our reading today of Lest We Forget.